Lord, this evening. I know there's a million and one other places you could be, but thank you for coming and spending time here in the house of the Lord. Because we know that time spent here is time well spent because we're with the Lord. Hallelujah. But before we turn to the Word of God this evening, let's just bow our heads again. I know David has already prayed, but let's ask for a blessing on the Word tonight. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come here to your house. Yet another Sunday evening. Father, as we turn to your word, we just simply ask that you would help us and encourage us and bless us, O oh God. And Father, I just pray that your, your hand will be upon this word this evening. Pray, Lord, it will be a blessing to everyone here in the room. Lord, I pray it would encourage us in our faith. It would build us up, O oh God. And Father, maybe somebody watching at home, that Lord, it would do the same for them. Yes, Lord. But Lord, maybe someone watching that doesn't know you as, as their saviour. And as their Lord, I pray, dear God, that you would speak to them through this word. And yes. Lord, arrest their hearts and arrest their souls, O oh God. And Father, I pray you would save them, save their precious souls. Not only just for time here, but Lord, for all eternity as well, we pray this in Jesus' lovely name. Praise you, Amen. 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 If you have your Bible with you, turn with me, please, to the first uh, chapter of John. John chapter 1, please, just for a couple of verses. John chapter 1. Hard to believe this is the last Sunday night of the month. Yeah. My goodness, journey has been very, very fast. And something to look forward to in the next uh, next lot of months, as it were. Uh, on the last Sunday night of the month, we're going to be doing testimonies. Uh, we're doing a theme of, this is my story, this is my song, uh, where someone will come along and share a testimony. And they we'll, would we'll all be well singing their favourite uh, hymn or their favourite uh, Christian song. So looking forward to the next... Uh, Next month, when it will be our dear sister Linda coming to share a testimony. So, guys, that's something uh, to look forward to. And of course, then in, in March, we also have our own dear sister Iris Evans coming to share her testimony as well, too. And then in April, all being well, we have uh, Packy Hamilton. Do you remember him? Yeah, he's coming to share his testimony as well, too. So, we're getting, we're starting to fill the books, as it were, because the year's trumping in already. It's hard to believe. So, but we're looking forward. There's nothing like having a testimony. Of God's saving power and his keeping power is wonderful, wonderful grace. Praise the Lord. Yes, sure. Praise the Lord. John chapter 1, just for two uh, verses, uh, 40 and 41. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found out his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Praise God. That's what it's all about. Folks, as we read John chapter 1, and I love John chapter 1, it's just one of those incredible chapters. It's, it's one of those standout verses that are chapters in, in Scripture where we see that the John, the, the evangelist, setting out exactly who the Lord is from the, from the word of the Lord, the word becoming flesh. We see the testimony of John the Baptist. We see the Lord being pointed out as as being the, the Lamb of God. These are, this, this is a wonderful time. Things are, are happening. This is right at the very commencement of the Lord's ministry. And what a woman, wonderful moment in time for, for Andrew and for John, who were followers of John the Baptist. There they are. They're at Bethabara that day, and John is baptizing people onto righteousness. And of course, we know, if we looked at it before, when John points out, sees among the crowd, the Lord Jesus making his way among the crowd. He points him out and declares, Behold the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Folks, how many people heard that that day? Who knows how many people heard that day? I don't know how many were there to be baptized along that shore. But there was two that heard and they decided to follow the Lord Jesus. And you know, that reminds us of, this, of, of, of the word of God as well too. Because, you know, few there be that find at times. Many, many, many will hear the word of God. But sadly, there will only be a couple, there will only be the few that really find the real thing and decide to follow Jesus. Now, I know there's a whole debate. Do we decide or does he call us? Well, whatever camp you sit in, there's been a moment in time, whenever you're saved, that you're following the Lord. Glory to God. But you know, they heard that. Behold the Lamb of God. John and Andrew hearing this, they decide to follow the Lord. And I think this is wonderful because... You know, the Lord's just making his way through. Uh, and we know that he's going to be baptized as, as, as well that day. But you know something. There's, there's something powerful, whatever. The Lord turns, and I love that conversation that they have along the road just prior to this. 
Whenever these two men are following, I'd love to know what their conversation was between John and Andrew. Because here they are, they're, the man that they've followed has said, this is the Lamb of God. This is the one who's going to take away the sin of the world. This is the Messiah. And they hear John's words and they accept John's word and they decide to follow Jesus. And of course we know that as they're making their way along the road, the Lord Jesus stops, turns to them and asks them that wonderful, wonderful question. What do you seek? And the old King James says, what seek ye? And of course, they, are, they turn and they ask that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful question. And I, what a title that is for any sermon. And when they turn and they say, Rabbi, where dwellest thou? When they come and they ask the question, Lord, where are you from? Where do you live? Will you tell us all about you? And you know what I think is wonderful when the Lord answers and says on them, come and see. Oh, hallelujah. Folks, I could skip around this room this evening. I could bat back and all. I could skip around this room this evening when I think of that. Come and see. Because in the moment that Christ saved you, Whenever you got onto your knees and you said, Lord, will you forgive me my sin? Will you come into my life? Will you be Lord of my life? Forgive me of all the wrong that I have done. The Lord says, come on and see. Come and follow me. Oh, hallelujah. And what I think is wonderful as well, he adds as well to me. And I will make you fishers of men. Glory to God. Yes, you know, the Lord's doing something wonderful, I believe, in the house here. We've seen it over this last number of months. God is really moving. He's making something here. He's building something here. But in our own lives, folks, he's making something in us. We're being changed time and time again. And hallelujah, we can say because we're in his hand, because he's the potter and we are the clay. We are being changed from glory onto glory. Hallelujah. Every day when we spend with him, you know, he's molding and he's making us more to be like him. And what I just love about those two men, they follow after the Lord from that moment on. And it says that they spent the evening with the Lord. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the conversation they had whenever they got to the home that the Lord Jesus was staying in? Because we know he didn't own any homes. He didn't even say it off himself. He says, you know, that the foxes have... Have, have their holes and the, the birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. So this was somewhere that someone would have brought him in. He was, goodness knows where it was. It doesn't really matter. But can you imagine the conversations that they, they, they would have had that night? I would love to have been a fly on the wall. I truly would have, but I'd love to have been there. And you know, when we get to heaven, you know, I know we'll know all things. But there was something wonderful about sitting down beside John or beside Andrew and said, what was discussed? What was spoken off in that house that evening? But whatever there was, whatever there was, after John declaring that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, we know that that was the first scene. But whatever Christ said that night in that home, Andrew, he was determined. He knew, oh, this is the one we've been looking for. This is the one the prophets have foretold. He couldn't hold it back anymore. And of course we see, he goes and he finds out his brother, Peter, or Simon as he's called then. And we know he comes up and he goes up and he goes to him. And no bones. There's no, no small talk. Not up and asking, hey, how was your day? He just boldly comes up to him and says, we have found the Messiah. Hallelujah. Yes, oh, and then, of course, we know that the Lord comes onto the scene as well, too. And there's that wonderful call to Simon. And then, of course, we know he's being called Cephas, which is Peter. Hallelujah. Another one added to the kingdom. And then, of course, we know even before the day is out, we go to the Lord Jesus, calls Philip, and then he calls Nathaniel, and many others are called. Aren't you glad you're one of the called this evening? Yes, sure. You're glad there's one day he called your name. And you heard and you answered. And you knew who was calling you. And it wasn't some wee idea or some crazy thing in your head. You knew it was the Lord. You were brought by the Holy Spirit. Something like Andrew spoke and told you about the Lord Jesus. And you said, I want to go that way. I'm tired of my old life. And what I love about these men, these men weren't just, they weren't just layabouts and had nothing to do. They left their nets. They gave up their business and they went and they followed after the Lord. What boldness. What wonderful, wonderful boldness. But you know, here's the thing, and we've learned this, 
And we have learned this, and we have learned it over and over and over again. And we can testify of, in one of the evenings of this is my story, this is my story. We will testify of it. We know what God calls. God keeps. Yes. That's the way that it works. He not call you into your work and you'll end up starving. If you end up starving, you haven't been called to that work. That's the truth. The Lord will keep. And my goodness, no matter how far down the, 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 the cupboards may come at times, you will not go without. Praise the Lord. Yeah, sure. I know it's easy for us to say here, I think of our, our saints who are living out in, in places like India and Africa where really there is nothing. But you know something? God still provides for them there. Because he's God. He, can, he only has to speak and he can bring this entire world and all the galaxies that we can't even see with our own eyes. He brings that into being. He calls the stars out every evening by name. Hallelujah. To think of this. And we think to ourselves, can the Lord not keep in a wilderness? Yes, can the Lord not feed in a desert? Of course he can. He kept an entire nation there for 40 years. Day in and day out, and my goodness, whenever they get into the promise, those who did get into the promised land, we know there were two old men and all the descendants of the others. But they weren't starving, you know. They weren't, certainly weren't starving. And in fact, when you look at even when you look even at, at how much that they had even in the wilderness, when they brought back those wonderful grapes that were huge, and they brought the pomegranates, they didn't even want them. They were content enough with what they had. In fact, they even went back into the Egypt again. A very sad when you think of it. You know what, folks? What a thought. Andrew goes the very next day and says to his brother Peter, We have found the Messiah. We have found the Christ. Folks, it is so very true. When you find Jesus, you can't keep it to yourself. You have to tell others. You're compelled within your spirit to tell everyone that you meet that you've decided to follow the Lord Jesus. You're compelled to tell everyone about his wonderful love that he has for us. You're compelled to, to, to read his word. You're compelled to, to learn his word. And you're compelled to, to, want to, to try to, to live by his, his word as well too. You know, we, we have been called, folks, into a wonderful, wonderful ministry here at Bali Sound to do what? To declare that he has come into the world to seek and to see of that which was lost. Oh, hallelujah. He has come into the world to save sinners. We can't think of, of, a, of a better message than that. You know, in John's gospel alone, just in this, in this, this gospel, the Messiah, or Christ, is mentioned as the sent one 43 times. I think John's trying to say something there, is he not? You know, he's not trying to think, whenever you read through it, you'll know exactly who he's talking about. You're not going, I wonder who this is. He's driving it home 43 times. It's almost twice every chapter. He's saying exactly who Christ is. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord for the likes of verses like John 3 and 17. When the Lord Jesus is speaking to, to Nicodemus, speaking of himself, he says, For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Folks, we think at times, and we're very narrow-minded. Sometimes, narrow-mindedness can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. You know, some of us think, of, if we only got, we've seen our family saved, so that would be enough. It would be, wouldn't it? If we've seen our family saved, oh, glory to God. Gathered in before the Lord gathers us up. That would be enough for us, you know. But folks, he came to, for the entire world. This is where me and Mr. Calvin would certainly be on, on different parts. I believe that Jesus died for everyone. He gave everyone a chance that if they look, if they believe in him, that, that they will be gloriously saved. I know what we're the elect. I know we can debate all those things. But folks, he came for every single one. Not just the few. We know that there's only a few, but the folks... He came for everyone, that the whole world. And yes, we want to see our families saved. Lord, save our families. May be this year in Jesus' name. But not only our families, Lord, save our neighbors. And even save those that we don't like as well, too, because let's be honest. We're Christians and we try to love everybody. There's some people, you couldn't like them if you hurt them. And, you, and you, no matter how hard you try, it's just something. And you go, Lord, forgive me if it's me. But even those people, the people that grind our gears, the people that, that wind us up, the people who, who oh, you would, you, you'd you love to see fall in the, the biggest puddle in Belfast in front of the whole city. You, you know one of those boys? 
But I've seen my shitty woman talk on like this, you know. But that's where we're, let's be honest, we're honest here, we're not. You know, because there's some Christians, honestly, my goodness, I don't, I don't know how they get through life at all. Not, not disliking anybody. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> Folks, we want to see them all safe. Our foes safe. I know that we shouldn't have foes, but the reality is because we're in this camp, we're in the camp of Christ, there are those who are against us this evening who hate the gospel. But we even want to see them safe. Praise the Lord. But you know, folks, I want us to, to just briefly consider this evening four very simple little things to, I hope, will be a blessing to your heart. Because as I, as I mulled over these the last couple of days, as it were, you know, they can out of you and cut, as it were, just meditating upon them. They've, they've certainly done my heart good. And these are this, so the four things about Christ the Messiah. The set one, the, the side one, to bring the shalom, it was just wonderful. The sent one of God. You know, thank God in the first place that he came. I, I love Christmas, you know. And I know we're, well, as far away from Christmas as I ever Because I know it was only last month. We can't go back. So it's as far away as ever. It's about 11 months away. You know, I do. I love Christmas. In fact, this year, and I'll probably get locked up for this now. I don't really care. This year, on the 12th of July, in the morning, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I get up and I come downstairs and went my way into the conservatory. And you know when you can go, hey Google? Mm -hmm. And I went, hey Google, play Heart Xmas. And the Google went, okay. And it was playing me Christmas tunes on the 12th of July. Not that I'm against the 12th of July or anything like that, but it was just one of those days that nobody would ever be listening to Santa Claus coming to town. I was! <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even about Santa Claus or anything like that. And the presents are wonderful and the cars are great and the food's wonderful as well too. It's something you think is really you're like a fed. I don't think I can fit, but you, you know by looking at me, it's not. Praise the Lord. But it's not about that. It's about he came in the first place. Hallelujah. It's all about him. He came. Hallelujah. So even there we were celebrating. And I, I celebrate every single day. That he came in the first place. Yes, you know. Hallelujah. He came, and I've shared this before so many times. His object of his, this mission, this was the greatest rescue mission of all. He came for us. John 10 and 10. Christ speaking of his own coming. He says, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Oh, hallelujah. Praise and I think this is one of the most beautiful verses of scripture that you can ever come across. He came as the prophets foretold. In a dark corner of Bethlehem, the light of the world came. All the signs were fulfilled. And the wonderful when you start reading through the scriptures again, and when you come to the, the prophecies about, about his, his first coming, and you sit there and you think about it for a moment, he fulfilled every single bit. Every I was dotted, every T was crossed, every jot and tittle was absolutely perfect. As I've said it in the Old Testament, this is how it was fulfilled in the new. Oh, glory to God. He was wrapped in those swaddling clothes. He was laid in that manger. He was witnessed by shepherds. He was worshipped by angels. The host declared his coming that peace on earth, goodwill to all men. I'm excited about Christmas already. You know. <laughs> they are. Peace has come. The Prince of Peace. He's come. Hallelujah. Bless Hope Lord. has come. Salvation has come. He has come to save his people from their sins. Oh, hallelujah. Praise so he has come for us in the first place. That will always, always, always excite me. When I think of the wonderful rescue mission that he came on in the first place. Came to suffer and to die for a sinner like me. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise thank you, thank Lord. you, Lord. Next week, part that just leads us into it. He died for us. I know he lived for us, but he died for us. There's a wonderful wee old hymn that I love listening to. There's a wee girl, you should check her out on YouTube. They call her Rachel Dow. She's from, from, he's over here in Northern Ireland. Wonderful, wonderful voice. But uh, the chorus of the old hymn is, he died in a twin death for me. Folks, when you listen to it, it just plucks the strings of your heart. It really does. And, it, and you know, Pastor Christie said it this morning, you know, when you're in the presence of the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord starts to move, 
and then cause the hardest man to weep. That's the truth. See, before I was saved, you wouldn't have seen me cry at all. In fact, I was that wee lad in the street. When I fell off my bike, the bike was left. And I ran into the back door to cry, make sure nobody seen me crying or weeping or anything like that. That was no, we girls cry. Big girl, big boys don't cry. That's what I was always taught. Now, folks, when I sit and I meditate upon the Lord, I don't care why I weep. Because he did it for me. Praise Glory Lord. to God. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he died that we might live. That wonderful, abundant life here. Oh, hallelujah. But that eternal life over there. Oh, what's it going to be like over there? No pain, no sorrow, no worries, no concerns. I love that old line that says, all will be glory in that land. What's it going to be like, folks, in that moment, in that wonderful eating above with, with the Lord? Oh, I, I scarce can take it in. I can't wait for that moment whenever you hear the trumpet call and we all go together. Hallelujah. Then we will know what it is to, to fully live. Really fully live. And I know that we're, we try to fully live here with this abundant life. This life that he has given us. The plans and the purposes and the new desires that he has placed in our hearts. But we know that the old man's always still there. We know that the old niggles are still there. Over there they'll be gone. Hallelujah. And not only that, but we'll be, we'll be like him, which is so much wonderful. Hallelujah. When I say that Jesus died for me, what I'm truly saying is this. I'm, and you're, you guys are exactly the same. When you say that Jesus died for me, we're making a declaration and we're saying that we could not save ourselves. That we could do nothing ourselves. Our works were not good enough. Our religious service was not good enough. In fact, the Word of God says that our good works were nothing but filthy rags. We couldn't save ourselves. Our good deeds, our acts of charity was never going to be enough. I feel so sorry for those that are caught in religion that are told, well, you know, if you're good at ways you're bad, well, then, you know, you'll get in. Folks, my good was never going to outweigh my bad. Ever. Never. If there was going to be a month of Sundays, that never happened. It was never going to happen. I was lost. And thank God I, I found the Savior. Hallelujah. And I love what the old saints used to say years ago when they were preaching. A seeking sinner will always find a seeking Savior. He came to rescue us. He went after the one on the hill. And that was even leading to see that he's talking after those that are on the hills far off. And he's bringing them unto himself. Praise the Lord. We were separated from the love of God. We were separated from a great Savior. I was on that broad, broad and crowded road leading to my own destruction. But yet, and this is, this is the yet of the scripture, these are the books of the scripture, yet, for my sake, he became poor. Oh, well, hallelujah. For my sake, he took the punishment due to me. For my sake, he paid my debt, he paid my ransom. For my sake, he said, Father, forgive them. It was my sin that put him there. Folks, I was the hopeless case. I was the hopeless cause. But Christ, hallelujah, he brought me home. And his death has made me free. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Lord. You know, if, uh, if anybody ever asks you, what sort of wee body I am, just say, he's free. He's free. Because I'm free indeed. Bless hallelujah. You, Lord. I've been made free. His death has bought my liberty. And through his poverty, folks, I've become rich. Not a big thick wall. Couldn't care about that, you know. Rich in Christ. Rich in him. Rich in his promises. Which are fresh and new every single day. Hallelujah. Who once, when we were without strength, yet were strong in him. Who once, when we were hopeless, now we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He died for the worst sinner. You know, and I make this, I make this opinion, and I know I'm looking at each of you who are saved here this evening. But as we know this, we're going out onto the net. And I want to ask whoever's watching out there, are you the worst sinner in the world? Are you the worst sinner in Belfast? Are you the worst sinner in your street? Well, folks, here's the thing. Paul said that he was the chief among sinners. And if he was the worst of the worst of the worst, if God could save him, God can save anyone. And folks, if we were the chiefest, then we know that he can say, and look at some of us, we would say, 
Paul, you weren't the worst. You weren't the worst. I was the worst. And if God can save me, look at what he done in Paul's life. And folks, look at what he can do in, in each of our lives. He's well able to do. That's why it tires me whenever people will go, oh, you know, he wouldn't take me for what I've done. He died for what you did and what you're doing. Hallelujah. Not only that, folks. He, not only did he die. And this is where we get our, our celebration Sunday morning after Sunday morning. Hallelujah. He was raised again for us. Bless you, Lord. Is it wonderful just to think of these things, you know? And I know, listen, I'm the one preaching to the choir, and you've heard this preach a thousand times and more. But you know, he was raised again for us. Romans 6 and verse 9 says this, Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. Hallelujah. Not that it ever had dominion over him in the first place. Romans 4 and 25 says, Who was de delivered for our offences, and was raised again for our justification. Oh, hallelujah. His, he has the victory over death. He was raised again on the third day. You know, and the stone wasn't rolled back to let him out. The stone was rolled back to let us in. To see that he wasn't here. And the angels, I, I think it was Billy said, the angels sat with a, with, as it were, with a disdain for the very stone. As if a stone and a seal could hold him back. Up from the grave he arose. And today he declares, as he declared to John, he might as well declare it again this evening from his own lips. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore. He tasted death for us. That we might not taste death. And I know some of us will go by the way of, of, of the grave. And that doesn't matter, you know. Because we close our eyes here. We look on our eyes in glory, absent from the body and present with the Lord. And folks, if death couldn't bind him and if the grave couldn't hold him, it will not bind you, it will not hold you neither. We're free. I love that old Johnny Cass, as I'm getting older, I'm getting more and more into country. I don't know what it is. But we're in good cuts and checks. Oh, he said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here, he sings that wonderful chorus. Ain't no grave gonna hold me down. And that's so true. We're not gonna be held back, hallelujah. He rose again triumphant, and we will rise too. His promise was, and always will be true, praise the Lord. John 10 and verse 18 says this, No man taketh it from me, speaking about, about his own life, but I lay it down of myself, and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. And we know that the wages of sin is death. But Christ, who was sinless and spotless and undefiled in all ways, that's the reason why death couldn't control him and they certainly couldn't contain him. And he laid down his life for us. And hallelujah, he took it back up again for us as well. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 19 to 26, uh, he says that, that if it wasn't for the resurrection, that we would be men most miserable. We have a hope, folks. That's what Paul said, we have a hope in Christ. Hallelujah. Otherwise, we'll be members of but now is Christ risen from the dead. We serve a risen king. Yeah, and because sure. of his great victory over death and hell, we too will know this great victory as well. We may go by the way of the trump. We may go by the way of the grave. But hallelujah, we're all going through the blood. Hallelujah. And I've already said we'll be absent from the body, yet we'll be present with the Lord. And we will be left with him. And as I've said earlier, we will be like him. Finally, folks, because my time is going, he lives in us. I never fully understand that. But he lives in us. One of my favorite verses of all the Bible, Galatians 2 and 20. And you know something, I look at this at times and I read it and I say, oh Lord, I wish I could do it better. I wish I could live it better. But it's what it says about what he has done for me. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, oh hallelujah, but Christ liveth in me. Oh, hallelujah. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Oh, hallelujah. And he gave himself for me. Folks, if we would take that verse and apply it to our lives properly, what sort of people would we be? I speak for myself this evening. He gave, he loved me gave himself for me. And the life was now we live. It's 
He that lives in us. Christ lives in me. What, what a statement. What a, an incredible declaration. I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. This is more than just a symbolic. Because we are now the temples of the Holy Spirit. As I wrote this the other day. I stopped for a moment. And I said, Lord, oh how I must grieve you. Because I'm grieved within my own spirit at times. But what I think and how I behave myself. And I'm not a pleased with thinking I'm running about like a rascal or, or anything like that. But I think you know where I'm coming from. Each of us, we all fall daily. And we're not what we could be. But praise God because of him, we're not what we should be. We should still be on the, the, the waves of the world. We should still be out there lost and abandoned. But he has brought us in glory to God. But don't we want to be more like him? More like him here. More like him in the transformation is done that every day, glory by glory, we become more and more like him. To think of it, folks, that Christ through the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in you. He lives in you. He's the one that causes you to breathe. He's the one that causes you to He is every, He should be everything in us. Folks, don't you remember the chorus years ago from Sunday school? There's a flag flying high from the castle of my heart for the king. He's in residence there. Hallelujah. And oh, he's the king of our hearts. But all oh, that we would keep the flag flying high, would we? From the castles of our own little hearts. Folks, we've been totally transformed. We've been born again by the Spirit of God. Our heart, our spirit saved, transferred from, the, from this walk of disobedience that we once had into a life of obedience with Christ. We are now brand new creations. Oh, hallelujah. The old, and this is where I rejoice, the old is passing away. Passing away. Day by day, it's getting more, it's getting better. The old ways are going. Glory to God. Some of them, when you stop and think, have passed away and gone. Old things that used to hold you, old things that used to bind you, are gone. And you can look back at you and say, Hallelujah, the Lord delivered me from that. Yes, and he did so much more to do in our lives to make us more and more like him. The old is passing away. All things are becoming and have become new. The changes, folks, that we see, the new experiences that we have in him, the, now we're enjoying daily experiences with Christ, this abundant life is because Christ is in us. Hallelujah. The wonderful hope of glory. This new desire, this new zeal that we have to serve the Lord. David Guzak in his commentary on this very verse says this, Paul realized that on the cross a great exchange has occurred. He gave Jesus his old, Try, uh, try to be right, uh, try to his old, which was the old way, trying to be right before God by the law life, and it was crucified on the cross. Then Jesus gave Paul his life, and Christ came to live in him. And folks, as I close this evening, we have done the same. We have given him our lives of sin and shame, of handing it over, saying, Lord, we don't want to go that way anymore, of sorrow and shame, and we have exchanged it for Christ and us. The hope of glory. We've exchanged the old ways for his way. We've exchanged the old man for the new man in Christ. We've exchanged the old life for the new life in him. From hopelessness to having a hope in him. Folks, whenever we consider Christ the Messiah, as we go this week thinking about him, remember this week he came for you. Make it, make it that's not just about us. You, yes. as an individual, yes. you. If you were the only sinner, he came for you. Hallelujah. Thank he you, died Lord. for you. He rose for you. He lives for you. Glory to God, he's Bless coming you, back Lord. for you. Yeah. And in between here, what's he doing for you this evening? Two wonderful, wonderful things. Number one, he's preparing a place for you. That you may live with him and reign with him whole glory. And the second, what's he doing? He's interceding. Bringing your name before the master, bringing your name before the before the Lord God, before His Father, day and daily. Bless what a wonderful Lord. God we serve! May the Lord bless you with Lord. this word this evening, and do you good in bless Jesus' holy name. Let's bow our heads together and we'll pray together. Oh, hallelujah! Father, we thank you for the the day that we have had here in the house. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the word this morning about the great love that the Lord Jesus has for each and every single one of us. And Lord, even this evening, just to take a look, another fresh look at the Lord Jesus himself. 
Oh, the blessed man of dark Calvary, and how he came, suffered and bled and died for sinners such as we. But Lord, we think of the, the riches that we have in him this evening. We think of the blessings that we have. Lord, they're new every day. And Lord, we want to give you thanks for each of the blessings we have. Blessings, Lord, knowing that uh, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And Lord, there's a place being prepared for us even right now. And Lord, we can sing with the old chorus writer, I've got a mansion just over the hilltop and that bright land where we'll never grow old. Lord, we look forward to the day whenever we will be caught up to see him and to see him in all of his beauties. Lord, we look forward to the day whenever we'll stand in that wonderful grand room in heaven when we will be shown to the Father and we'll be called one of the sons. Oh, Lord, we look forward to that. We look forward to blessed unity and in glory with the Lord Jesus Christ, with wonderful fellowship. But Lord, we look forward to the day whenever we can see him face to face and say, thank you, Lord, for saving us. Praise you, Lord. A sinner lost and bound for hell. And Lord, if you've turned our lives around, Lord, we will never, ever be able to thank you enough. May we live for you here, Lord. May we do our best for you. And Lord, I pray that we would hear that well done, my good and faithful, faithful servant. servant. Lord, Praise bless us, word this evening. Bless your people here tonight. Lord, we love each and every one of them. The Lord, and you, you love them all the more. And Lord, for those who are watching on camera, watch a lot later time. We pray your hand of blessing upon them too. And Lord, if there's someone that doesn't know you as Savior, lost in this world, I pray, Father, that they would see something or hear something or speak through this word. Holy Spirit, you can speak when the, when, the, when the preacher's quiet. And Lord, I pray you would bring them on to yourself and save their precious souls. Lord, we thank you for this week. I'm going to close off an old month and enter a brand new one. But Lord, we're not going to take a step forward unless you go with us. So Father, we pray you would go with us this month. Help us, O oh God. Help us, O oh Lord. We thank you for the month which has passed and how you've kept your hand upon each of us. Lord, there's been highs and there's been lows. But Lord, you've been with us every single step. Bless you, Lord. Lord, we look to you and we ask for your blessing. Take us home, Lord. And Lord, I pray that we'll even have the opportunity tonight to even witness in our own homes the goodness of God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah.